and welcome to lesson 9.2 in the Alice tutorial series. Today we're going to be looking at animation using poses. Now you may have seen a button in the properties panel of some of your objects that say set pose and you may see a method that says set pose 2. Uh, today we're going to practice uh, creating animations using those methods. One of the things I really like about poses is it makes creating more realistic and detailed animations much easier. In particular, making, say, a walking animation or an animation where a character looks around from side to side, you can make it fluid and pretty neat looking by using these uh, pose commands. In fact, some of the objects come pre-positioned with poses, but we're going to be making our own. So let's go ahead and get started with lesson 9.2, which is animation through the pose. So here we are, I've got a new Alice Grass World open, and in order to animate an object using poses, let's go ahead and get an object. And if you're not in the people category yet, I think we're going to demonstrate this with the people category, select people. And what we want to do is we want to find a semi hard resolution model, um, like something like the coach doesn't have a lot of joints. So you can't move his legs at the knees or his arms at the elbow. So it's a little bit more difficult to animate something like the coach. So I think what we're going to do for our example is we're going to use Josh here. So take Josh and drag him out into your screen. And Josh comes in a pretty good standing position from the outset. So um, that, I mean, that's a good starting position. However, we want Josh to be able to return to that position so let's select Josh, go to Properties, and use this button that says Capture Pose. When you press that, it will give you the option to name this pose, and I'm going to call this Standing Position. And what we have now is a snapshot of how Josh looks right now. What I want to do is I want Josh to be able to look to the left and look to the right in a somewhat realistic fashion. So let's hit the Add Objects button and go in and start animating Josh so that he's looking, let's, let's start by making him look over his right shoulder. Now truth be told, this can be a tedious process at times. It's a lot of affecting subparts and little tweaks and little changes. Whoops, grabbed his eye there. So it can take some time. Let's maybe have him tilt his head forward a little bit. And then we'll pull this uh, front arm forward a little bit. Maybe turn his left arm in. and Turn this arm just a little bit. So it's a lot of tweaking. But what we're going for is we want to get Josh into a somewhat reasonable position that someone would be in when they look over their right shoulder. So I'm just adjusting some of the hand positions here. We don't want his fingers. Let's get his whole hand. And then this hand will probably rotate in just a little bit. So something like that is pretty good. When we take a look at Josh now, we've got Josh looking to the left. And we turned his torso and maybe even turn this leg a little bit. So there we go. That's Josh looking to the left. We want to save Josh in this position. Be really careful right here. It's easy to hit capture pose again and try and get Josh here. But what's going to happen is since you have the right upper leg selected, it's going to create a pose for the right upper leg. We want to make sure that the entire Josh gets this pose. So from here, once you have all of Josh selected, select capture pose. And I'll call this one looking right. I now have Josh looking right and standing up. You may have noticed when you right click on an object, one of the methods is set pose to. Having created two poses, we now have standing position and looking right. So if I set Josh's pose to standing position, he'll return to his normal standing position. If I right click on him and set pose to Josh looking right, he'll turn and look to his right. We can do the same thing in code as well. So let's right click on Josh and send him back to the standing position. So Josh standing position and this is where Josh is going to start. And I'll select Josh, select methods, 
and let's drag set pose to look right. So I'll have Josh look right, wait for two seconds, and then set his pose back to the standing position. Hit play, and we have Josh looking to the left and then moving back. Just like all our animations, we can add arguments to this as well. We can set the duration from one second to two seconds to make him look a little bit slower, and then the duration on his return to the standing position from two second from one second to two second. And now the animation is going to run a little bit slower. Clicking at objects again, let's go ahead and have Josh look to the right as well. So click effect subparts. Let's move his torso to the right this time. So we're going to represent what Josh looks like when he's looking to the right. So we'll have his head kind of tilt a little bit. And just like we did with the arms, I, I think we definitely need some work on the arms, but uh, you know they'll, they'll, they'll serve for this purpose right now. So we'll have the hand come in a little bit, and we want to rotate the hand. And just kind of play around with the animation. One thing that, that definitely helps, and I do it quite a bit, is to get a reference photo. To go online and actually find a human being who's looking to the left and then model a character after that. Uh, that works really well for making looking animations, and it also helps a lot if you do a search for uh, walking animation reference sheet, you can get uh, a walking animation of usually five to seven uh, different, I guess, standing poses. I, I, I don't really know what to call them, but then you can model seven different poses based on those pictures, and it creates a pretty good walking animation. So. That looks about right for Josh looking over his uh, left shoulder. So again, making sure that we have the whole Josh selected, not just the forearm. We'll go up to Josh, select properties, capture pose, and then have Josh look left. So this will be our looking left pose. To start our animation, let's right click on Josh and set him back to the standing position. So this is where Josh is going to start. He's going to look to his right. Let's go ahead and make that back to one second, because I think one second looks a little bit better. He'll start by waiting two seconds, looking to his right, and then immediately we'll have Josh look to the left. So select Josh, and then we'll have him look left. And maybe we'll do that at a duration of two seconds, because it's going to take a while from him to get to the right position to the left. Have him check that for a minute. So throw a wait command in there for two seconds and then have him return to the standing position. And let's see what that looks like. So Josh is gonna wait, look to his right, then look to his left, check, and then come back to the standing position. There's no limit to the amount of positions that you can set your characters to, and it makes animating a realistic looking scene a little bit easier because Alice will automatically change the object to match how they were set in the poses that you set them in. One thing to keep in mind about poses is it doesn't uh, change, say, like an object's role. If I were to go here, and so right now these are my poses for, for Josh, and if I were to take him, and I'm going to put them in this position right here, which I know is really weird. The poses are independent of the overall object's role. So if you were to run this animation now, it wouldn't matter that Josh is kind of hovering in the air. He's still going to take the same actions. I made that mistake when I first started animating. Um, I wanted to make a spaceship that flew off, similar to what you saw in the last challenge program, and I kept changing the role and trying to set positions that way but it doesn't work for the whole object. So kind of keep that in mind as you're animating with uh, the poses. But there's really no limit to the amount of poses you can have, and you can switch between them. It makes it really easy. Let's go ahead and put Josh back down into a standing position. If I wanted to have him start by looking left and then looking to the right, I simply change the order that the poses are set. So we have him pause, look to his right, and then look over to his left pause, and come back to the standing position. So that is how poses work in Alice. Let's go ahead and get to the lesson 9.2 challenge program and see if you can use poses on your own.
right, welcome to the Lesson 9.2 Challenge program. And uh, this particular program is one that I think you can do a much better job than I did on. Let's uh, take a look at the throwing animation that I made for the coach here. And so I just, I made a really crude animation of the coach throwing a pitch. Now, one of the problems with the coach is I didn't have elbow joints or knee joints to work with, and I didn't spend a whole lot of time on this particular challenge program. So I fully expect that you could do a little bit better by setting poses. Uh, to make the coach throw the pitch, I, I simply set a variety of poses. He's in the starting position here. I had a leg kick, uh, a follow through, a point that he released the pitch, and then kind of, uh, I tried to rotate him so he was standing a little bit straighter, and it didn't quite work out. But you get the idea of poses. Your goal in the Lesson 9.2 Challenge program is to create a scene in which you have a realistic throwing or walking motion. Now, one thing that I uh, failed to show you um, during the lesson was a walking reference sheet. Let me pull one of those up real quick so that if you decide to try and make a walking animation for this challenge program, you'll know what I'm talking about. So just uh, real quick on Google, I pulled up a walking animation reference um, and I saw an image that looked like this. This is about what I'm talking about. Uh, when I scroll down here, you can see uh, this walking animation reference will give you five different poses that you can set your walking animation to. You just pay special attention and set five poses, then cycle through them at a reasonable speed. You can create a very good looking walking animation using poses. But uh, that is completely up to you whether you want to do the walking animation or you want to do this uh, coach throwing motion. Again, it, it, not the best animation in the world, but it is good practice for poses for when you want to do more complicated scenes. If you have any problems setting poses, creating walking animations, or any other things that uh, you've seen in this video, you can go ahead and leave those in the comments and I will help you out as best I can. Good luck using poses. Uh, hopefully you can make some really cool animations. Thank you so much for watching and have a great night.